short walkthrough of Crave's sequencer might be useful as I found it a little confusing at first. There are only a few buttons um, and these have got multi-functions which you really need to know. Like for example, how do you save something? There's, there's no save button there and you really do need to save it because uh, I lost quite a few patterns when I was playing around with this, thinking they'd be held in the memory and they're not. Yeah, there's no screen or other feedback, so I did get lost while I, was, while I was programming this quite a few times and couldn't get out of various modes. So eventually decided to actually read the manual. Um, which didn't seem that logically laid out to me. It was a bit confusing at first. I mean, it's all in there. It makes sense once you've read it. Well, say it's all in there. Most of it's in there. But that brings me to this demo. Uh, and this is the same one they use in the Odyssey. So if you've got an Odyssey, um, this should help you with that as well. So just the main functions. They've got eight banks with eight patterns in them. So you select the pattern using this button here. One, two, three, four, five, six. And you select set the bank with shift and bank. So bank one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So you can use these or you can use these to select the bank. So I've been playing with pattern six on bank one, which we're on now. Let's play. <laughs> and it's lost it just by going through the patterns and banks there. I've lost what I've been doing. A bit, a bit idiotic of me. Anyway, so there you go. You do have to save it sort of as soon as you've got what you want, save it. And I'll show the save routine later on. So each pattern can have up to 32 steps. So you've got eight steps here. Then you go through page mode, so page two, page three, and page four, and each page can hold eight steps. And when you play, like every other sequencer in the world, it plays one to eight, then nine to 16, flicking through the pages. Page one will show steps one to eight. Page two will show 19 to 16, etc., etc. Another thing to note, it will always play from the last step it played from unless you press reset. So let's go to um, another bank here, or another pattern. Hopefully one that is still saved. Let's come on page mode. So that's just an eight step pattern. Let's stop it there on four for play again. It starts on five. Stopped on five, it'll start on six. So if you want to start from the start, press reset and then start. So here's one of program that's got four pages, 32 steps. And you can see they're flicking through from pages one to four and showing what's happening. But if I'm in page mode, for example, and I'm just looking at page two, it'll only show me what's happening on page two. So shift and page exits that mode makes it a bit more more easy to understand. And I've been in page mode for ages trying to work out what was going on. Um, that's not in the manual. So, well, I've not found it in the manual, so good to know. If we press shift and step mode, these are the steps. And that's page three, page four, page one. So come out of page mode. So maybe just mute a few of the steps on page one. Reset. Play. So if we're on page mode, we'll always look at that page. So as it's playing, we're still always looking at page one. So that's what these buttons do. That's step mode. Press come out of page mode again, press shift and keyboard. I'm back in keyboard mode. So obviously if we go to a new pattern, let's go to pattern six and we go into step mode. Nothing's lit because nothing's programmed. But then that can be quite confusing because you think you're in keyboard mode and you're not, you're in step mode, but there's nothing there. So you notice the difference being that's orange. When we're in keyboard mode, we've got the octave indicator. So to move up and down the keyboard. Let's program something into this empty one. 
let's just do something really nice and simple. So press record. Then press some uh, rests in there. Or oh, one, two, three. What this means, well, as it's flashing, it means this is the active step. So as far as the as the sequence is concerned, you've recorded this step. Now you can start editing things in this in this mode. But seven, eight. So now it thinks we've done eight steps. When it's flashing, it doesn't mean that's the one it's waiting for a step for. That means it's programmed as far as it's concerned. So if we play now. Because that's a bit confusing, because sometimes if you get lost when you're doing a pattern, let's write another pattern. So, so ah, I've gone too many um, without realizing it. So I've gone too, too many there. Three too many, I should say. So we want to set the end to that at eight on page one. So we come out of record mode, go to page mode. Want to be on page one, put it in step mode, shift, set end, eight. Play. And now we're back to just an eight step sequence like we wanted. When it comes from the factory, it's got no preset patterns in there, so they're all initialized. But to initialize, it's shift, reset, and pattern. And now it's all gone again. And that's what you have in every one. So as I've just demoed to input a pattern, put it into record mode. Now I'm not getting into record mode there. Why is that? Because I'm in step mode, because it's orange. Go to keyboard mode, record. There we go. Okay, so we've got the basic notes in there. And if you wanted a 16 step pattern, you just type in 16, it's, it's that simple. But now it's in there, we can, we can do five things. We can add a rest, change the gate length. We can add glide, add an accent. Where's accent? It's there. And add a ratchet. So the first thing we need to do when we're in step mode is select the step we want to edit. So we go shift and three. So we're going to edit step three. So while this is flashing, we're now in step edit mode. The tempo now becomes the gate length. It doesn't adjust tempo. And the glide knob no longer adjusts the glide rate of the overall sound, but it toggles glide on and off and sets the number of ratchets per step. So let's look at these. Looking at the gate length, if we twist that, this is the gate length from short to long. So let's put sustain on, decay off. So each of the steps will play the exact gate length. Let's play that. They go change the gate length of three to make it nice and long. So now let's switch glide on for step three. Turn the glide up and we've got number five LED flashing, which means glides on. Let's play. Now the overall global glide rate must be on zero. So come out of step edit mode, press shift and the key again. We're back in keyboard mode. Let's turn the glide up, shall we? Somewhere like that. Let's go, let's play the sequence again. Now let's go back into edit number three. If we press any of these keys now, we'll change the note value of, of step three. So press that. Change the note value. Let's put it an octave up, shall we? So stick it two octaves up. Play it. There we go. So now let's edit step four. So let's put an accent on step four. So press accent. Seven's flashing. Let's play that. You can hear four's a little bit louder. Let's, it's not so obvious there. Let's put it on, um, onto number six, shall we? So let's turn accent off on four, press accent again, stops flashing, go to six, shift six, turn accent on, there we go. And you can hear it's a little bit louder and it sounds like it's, um, it's increased the filter as well. And now let's add a ratchet, so we go to step eight. 
So Shift and 8. And let's add the ratchet. So Shift and reset, stroke accent key. And as we twist this, the number of ratchet moves up. So from one to four. So let's have two. Increase it to three. So you can go through each of your steps and adjust those five parameters. So it's really quite flexible from that perspective. And you'll notice LED six is flashing, which indicates there's a ratchet. So put a ratchet on two as well, for example. So shift two. I've, by pressing two then, I've just changed the note on eight to a D. Have a listen to that. <laughs> so you've got to be careful doing that. So let's go into two again anyway, and let's put a ratchet on two. So I think I've showed everything. We've got um, an increased gate length on one of them. We've got um, a glide. We've got a couple of ratchets and we've got an accent. So let's put a couple of rests in. Let's go to five and six and put a rest on each of those. Rest it. Eight's flashing on the LEDs to show it's got a rest. Go to six. Put a rest in there now. Where are we? Rest. So five and six shouldn't play. If we come out of this mode and we go into shift and step, you'll see the twitched off. So you can switch them off using shift and step, or you can switch them off um, inside the pattern itself. Put them back on. So if we're happy with that, we need to save it. If we start going anywhere else, we lose it. So hold shift and play until it starts flashing slowly. That's number six, wasn't it? And to save it there, press shift and record and it's saved now. But say we wanted to save it in another bank, press shift and play to go to save. We want to save it in bank, bank four, pattern one. Say so, so we press pattern one. And then bank four, shift record. So if we go into bank four, pattern one, it should be there. That's here. Yay. <laughs> That's such a beautiful sequence. When you program it in, you can also use a MIDI keyboard as well. You don't have to use these keys, which might make it easier if you're going to do something over one octave. And also you can do all these adjustments as you, as you program. You can add ties and you can add ties. Well, the manual says you can add ties by changing the gate length to full. So let's try that. Let's go to a different pattern. Let's go to pattern seven. Nothing in it. Let's make a pattern using eight steps that just plays two long notes. So. I want to make that just to play the C and then the G. So if I play it at the minute. So if I take step one and I increase the gate time to full. Let's try that with two. <laughs> yeah, I've done it again. Um, so let's just change one back to the C. Let's go to two. Change the gate length to full. Let's go to three, do the same again. Shift three. Shift four, again. So it's holding them on, but it's not actually a tie because it plays the envelope, listen. You can sort a tie, but if you've got any sounds that rely on the on the envelope. It 
it's not tied anymore. So it's not really a tie. It's just playing it for longer. So, so it's a bit weird that I spent ages trying to figure that out. So hopefully that hopefully I've got that wrong and someone can put me right. Or maybe there's an update required. Or maybe I'll just save lots of people lots of time trying to work out what's going on. And you'll notice if you mute steps or sometimes with the ties, you can still hear some triggering going on. So here you can hear steps two, three, four, six, seven, and eight triggering. It depends on the synth settings, but it is there. And if you watch the demo video I made with showing some sequences, you can hear those little sort of ghost notes playing. And you know, it is an effect. It's maybe a bit of bleed or something. It's there. So just something to note. And finally, the, the sequencer can send um, control voltages to this assigned CV out here. And there's a selection of them. But you're never going to remember what they all are. You're probably best off using the app for that. But using this sort of gives you a, another type of LFO in a way. You can set a ramp that will ramp up for the duration of the pattern. Or a saw that will go from zero to peak to zero again over the duration of the pattern. So nice sort of slow effects. Or you can have a sort of um, a randomization, which is a bit like sample and hold. So let's show a couple of them, shall we? Shift, hold, and eight. LED one starts blinking. So you've got assignable inputs on page one and assignable outputs on page two. So let's put an assignable output seven. Is a step triangle, so it should do a nice sort of slow LFO on that. So we've assigned to this CV um, a, a slow triangle. Let's put that into the cutoff and see what happens. There we go. So we can change the amplitude of that by mixing it in the VC mixer. Let's just do that then. So plug this into mix two and the VC mix out goes into the VCF cutoff. So maybe change that from a triangle to a ramp. And then, yeah, it's sort of a variation on sample and hold, I suppose, which is a nice way of getting sample and hold into this, which is random. So let's press eight and we get to random. If you use that quite a lot, that's that's a really handy little function that, but it's one of those ones that you've got to dig into it to find. But as I say, it essentially gives you another LFO. So I hope that was of some use to somebody somewhere. It was of use to me just to go through and, and learn it properly actually. And it helped me design the patches on the sound demo video I made. So it's much more flexible than it sort of looks at first from this interface. So uh, see you next time.
Thank you.